we've got normal sound, normal video, normal eh, everything, and I'll do shit and post. Again, <laughs> I I looked at it and it shows an image and then it doesn't. But, oh well, it is a wonderful Tuesday morning, and uh, today's episode, just like all the past episodes this month, is brought to you by. The great people over at GrowGeneration.com, where the po- bleh, where the pose, <laughs> where the pros go to grow. Speaking of growing, it's 420 Manny, what's up, yeah, man? It is. How you doing? Doing all right. Oh man, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of pe- people might not believe it or or know it, but uh, I never uh, part partook before uh, le- leaving the army army like i went 35 years <laughs> without ever even trying you know green, oh, wow. green stuff uh but i always had friends that were i never was against it was just a a my dad was in the army it wasn't worth the risk i lived on base it's federal property get caught with that <laughs> going through the gate you know um but i had friends that did it and and there's a great funny culture around it. Stoner movies are, are a thing. And I thought thought today might be kind of cool to talk about some of our uh, uh, favorite stoner stoner films, man. You, you like stoner movies? Yeah, there, there's quite a, quite a few I, I enjoy very, very much. All right. Well, um, let's 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 fucking talk stone stoner films man uh let's let's kick it off with with one of your your favorites and no no particular order or if you want to do like three two one sure well i i have uh I, I, we'll just i guess we'll just do um a list and then at the end we'll kind of reveal what our quote-unquote favorite one is yeah sure um uh, i i think one of my top favorite um stoner films has to be grandma's boy oh uh, yes directed by nicholas Gusson, uh starting linda cardinelli alan covent peter dante and shirley jones i mean come on that movie's so much fun uh you, you have you have the the video game boss who thinks he's a robot yes and then uh and then uh, the weed, the, the weed man has an African because he has a, <laughs> he has a lion and he has a monkey. Um, you can't yell when the lion gets here, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think probably my favorite part of the movie, two two parts, and it's and it's very uh, close together is um, the decision. And, and I, I'm sad to say that I've made decisions like this in the in my life, and I've ever totally regret it, but. You know, he was too high to drive. He was too high to drive. So the monkey gets to drive. The monkey got to drive. And then the, when they combine the weed together, they recorded it for scientific purpose. Yes. There's just, there's just so many good moments in that movie. And then Betty White's in it. I mean, what else can you? What else do you want? You know. Yeah, and so. uh, like you said, what's her what's her name from um uh. Uh, from um, not not Betty White, but uh, the mom from. Sorry, not Betty White. You're Ray, right. Ray, Ray, Ray. Everybody yeah. loves Ray Raymond. Yeah, she's g- great in it. It it's uh also uh one of one of my 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 top three. Um, I saw that I think for the first time in in Iraq, and um, uh-huh. and uh my my roommate. Uh, he had gotten the nickname Hollywood while we were ch- training to to go out because he's always wearing uh, flashy sun- sunglasses, and uh, one of the tr- trainers nicknamed him Hollywood. So anyway, uh, we we watched it and uh, just la- laughed our a- asses all off. It was such a funny funny movie um, made by you know uh, Adam Sandler's production company and uh with a lot of his you know for his lack of a better right. term playhouse <laughs> you know yeah. uh actors and uh i i just some of my my favorite p- parts are like when he he first when we first meet da- dante the 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 dealer uh when uh um, <laughs> yeah. 
uh, what's the main character? Uh, was it Greg is his name or some shit like that? Anyways, uh, when he goes over there, he's like, I'm not tan, I'm bronze. <laughs> he's just like yeah. the mo most ridiculous looking fake color like ever. <laughs> it's just over the top with the p little pigtail things and yeah. just – <laughs> I love that movie. And then they're they're downstairs getting high. And there's all the noise upstairs with the monkey. And, like, the karate guy goes to take – because they got the karate guy to train the monkey because monkey, he's got to right. protect the Frankenstein weed and stuff. This is all common sense, people. <laughs> and, uh, uh, um, and by the way, way if you do – uh, par partake today, please do be safe. Fo follow all laws and uh, regulations of where wherever it is you live, state, city, and uh, country. Um, but I I love it when they 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 go up there. The the karate guy disappears, and Dante goes up. He's like monkey, and then the monkey just drop kicks him from the top <laughs> of the stairs. <laughs> oh man, I love I loved because it, it it takes a lot of um. It takes a lot of, of like geekdom uh, stereotypes, but shows them as what really inspired that that stereo stereotype versus like a uh, uh, Big Bang Theory, which is almost and I and to, to each their own. I know some people love it, but it borderlines on like a offensive almost the way it stereotypes geeks and and geeky geeky people. This did it in. A um, uh, more unique way showing that it's not uh, 1970s geeks anymore at the video co game companies. Yeah, sure, you do have the robot guy, but you also have, like, Samantha, uh, Linda uh, Cardinelli's character. You know, you have uh, uh, characters like uh, uh, the main character. Why do I keep wanting to say Greg? It's not Greg. Um, but... Um, yeah, man. What what did you think on 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 that? Just out of out of curiosity, just the portrayal of of gaming culture and and stoners. Yes, it's exaggerated, but I still think that's like I have more memories, like conversations like they had with with my <laughs> friends than than stuff from Big Bang Theory. What do you think? Well, I, I've talked to you about how I, I relate to Big Bang Theory quite right, a bit. Right, right. You, you uh, are one. Of, that's why I wanted to ask you. Uh, no, Grandma. You know, um, it's it's another it's another side of the coin because when sometimes when you're you know high or with your friends and you're watching videos or playing video games or or whatever, you have that kind of conversation and and some and and it. It, you know, it's over the top obviously because it's a comedy and it's a it's a you know, i guess you can call it a stoner comedy but it's fun and it's a, and if it wasn't over the top then you you kind of i think you you kind of lose its its luster uh because like moments like the like the monkey drop kicking the guy or, or uh or all of the um I call the grandmas, whatever, if you want to call them all grandma, well, they, when they take the, the reindeer and the Frankenstein yes. you know, like, <laughs> walking around like that. Um, uh, you know, just, just so many fun little, little moments are, it's, it's just fun. And, and yeah, I, I just think it's exaggerated, but it's, it's supposed to be, if it, if yeah. it was just kind of a little bit more toned down, it, it loses a little bit. Uh, the part where, uh, he, he, he's, uh, uh, um, uh, What's his name? Uh, Nick Swartzen. Nick Nick uh, Swart Swanson Swartzen or whatever his name is. Yeah, something uh, like that. I, he's apparently, I guess, the master tester or whatever. Nobody can beat him. And then uh, they install a dance, dance revolution machine. Name. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh no. And then and then like he's like, he he wrecks them once again. And he's all like, "Oh my god, a high score! What does that mean?" <laughs> I don't know why that line made me laugh so much, but uh, does that is that good? Does that mean I I won? I yeah, won? <laughs> yeah, that was that was so that was funny. Yeah, that, Grandma's boy, man, just just a just a freaking good time. It is, it is, and you know, um, uh, I I can definitely put that as my my number three, and my number two is gonna upset some people. 
uh, because it's a lot of people's number one. It might even be your number one. I have a theory on what your number one might be, and it's either th this movie or potentially another one, one but I'm just going to say whether or not I was r right or wrong at the end. end. But for me, uh, my number one has a special spot, and we'll get there. Number two is Half-Baked. How, how can you go, go wrong? The Dave, Dave Chappelle, uh, um, uh, fr Frick, uh, help me out. Um, not Leary. Um, why do I always go to Dennis Leary when I, I, I think of this damn, damn movie for some fucking re reason? Because he Dave talks, Chappelle, Guillermo Diaz, Jim talks a lot. Brewer Jim and Harlan Brewer. Brewer. There, thank you, thank you. That's the names I was looking for. Was Brewer? I always, for some reason, go with. Le Leary talked about, anyway, ways. Half Baked, great m movie, hilar hilarious, uh, really, really sh shows off like the most stereotypical of s stereotypical <laughs> stoner uh, tr tropes from getting the the animals stoned to the 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 over the top rap rapper with his own weed brand and the. The the premise of Chappelle working at a laboratory and yeah. get, getting access to the to the main and then dude the the scene with the uh, uh where he's got to give up mar marijuana for the girl and he goes to, <laughs> to the meme and you have Bob Saget <laughs> have you I I'm not even gonna I don't even want to bleep <laughs> it out because who but, this man yeah it's like have you ever done that that in a parking lot for cocaine that's that's an addiction <laughs> <laughs> i i love the movie is is it on your your list or no no of course yeah okay and, and it's on my list because of the fact that it's so quotable anytime it's still to this day at work anytime anyone's gonna go to the store it's like everybody hey, wants something it's like bring back some abba zabba's so, and then it's like uh what's that thing we used to get back in high school <laughs> we still we still quote that movie all the time so yeah, there's there's no there's no reason why that shouldn't be on anyone's top list. It so then I'm guessing Chappelle. that's your number one then. No, so you guys no, must no, no. Okay, cool. So uh, talk a little bit more about it then. Uh, it, it's just a lot of fun from the from the premise of getting the, the homie, um, uh, stuck in trying to get the homie out of jail because he fed a mm. diabetic horse, <laughs> and, and I I think. I think the oh. favorite part of that movie and the the part we quote the most is uh, just randomly goes like when someone's going to leave, it's like, all right, I'm not going to do what everyone thinks I'm going to do. All I want to know is who's coming with me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's good. Just <laughs> and, and just the uh, fact that they had the um, the brains to name the girl Mary Jane was great. Mm -hmm. Um, and the guy on the couch, it, 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 you know, oh, that's you know, such a good gag. <laughs> you, you need the guy on the couch and just, just overall, man, just, uh, I remember how much I laughed when he, when he, when he's at the lab and then they bring him the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the stacks and he almost melts. Yeah. <laughs> he like loses it. his Love footing it. and everything. Just, um, just really clever. And yeah. And, uh, if you like Dave Chappelle, there's no way you don't like this movie, you know? Definitely. Where are you from? Jamaica. It's like, where are you from? It's like, down by the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it, they they did uh, they did what a lot of uh, stoner movie shows try to do, and that that's include the two OG stoner movie guys. Cheech and or Chong, Tommy Chong, mm -hmm. Cheech Marin. Um, Cheech Marin, of course, has had a varied uh, uh, career post Cheech and Chong days. Uh, TV shows not related to, to stoner stuff. The famous um, strip joint scene in Dust Till Dawn, which my wife had never seen. And I got to show her that scene as she just laughed so hard because that final line, if if we ain't got it, you don't want it. Just, <laughs> oh my god. And after the list, you're like, oh but but um 
you know how uh not how how high but uh half baked had had Tommy Chong Hong in it, and I always whenever I see Tommy I I think of uh that that seventy show which is probably one of the best stoner shows that's ever ever been made like on the on the TV side the the idea of the the table and yeah. the spinning camera mm-hmm. that is one of the mo- most brilliant like ways to do, do that and Tommy Chong being in, involved uh from time to time when the parents <laughs> accidentally had the brownies and the, the photoshop guy <laughs> yes i i love it they're playing and, life and your life is hard man yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so so great and, and i think it's when he's uh i think he's uh been uh, stopped in when they went to Canada for beer, and they're like asking him stuff. Or no, 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 no. I I think it was Red makes fun of him for something, and he he's like, I think I'm Chinese, man. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he, he really he, he's part part Chinese. <laughs> he's, it's great, and we it, while I didn't put a a stoner film from Chi Chi Chong on the, the top the three, he. We we wouldn't be anywhere with, without up in smoke. We wouldn't be absolutely. We wouldn't be there with without. We wouldn't be here talking about this. Kevin Smith wouldn't have have clur- clerks. H- Half baked w- wouldn't exist. How high for Friday probably wouldn't because Ch- Cheech and Chong kind of helped make. They they took the the reefer madness bullshit and put enough comedy on it. That it, it became what while the general public was still like, oh god, not in my my house, but I'll watch a movie and laugh at it, which right. opened up a new set of com- comedy, and and I love it. It's it's great, and um, yeah, you got anything else to say about Cheech Chi- or Ch- Cheech and Chong? Um, yeah, it it also kind of uh for for latinos it kind of poked fun at you know the culture with, with the whole mexican-american song uh some you know some of those things we could relate to uh the love machine was a was freaking amazing and um oh, man, i haven't you, you know digging right? into those audio recordings and and like the audio only go yeah. keep going sorry yeah no just 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 a just a really good time again and um it's funny because it's it's going to be a recurring uh, phrase I use for any of the movies that we talk about. Just a really good time, and I mm-hmm. think that's what that's what I think that's what they're meant to be. It's just meant to be enjoyed with the boys, you know, in a in in the living room space after you know you, you got baked, probably a lot of snacks going on, fun conversations. So a lot of the memories you have with these films are very positive, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, because <clears throat> that's what you're doing. You you you're chilling out. You're chilling, and then um. And then these films were enhanced, right? It's almost like that was a 3D glasses to your movie experience. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I can see that. Uh, just, just so much fun, and but uh, a lot of the, a lot of the references from the film are, are still used today, and not even in the same context of smoking weed. Just, mm-hmm. just memorable lines. Oh, I agree. A hundred, a hundred percent. Um, it's uh, it's it's. Comedy is like my my go go to and and comfort my comfort item, you know. And mm-hmm. uh uh having having these types of movies and and being able to go back to to even older films, like I said, up in smoke and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, it it even allowed me to connect with with my square ass da- dad. You you know, my my dad hates my tattoos he hates my ear get he lets me be me but you know he's my dad's a square where he's he only drank uh alcohol legitimately uh, essentially out of out of peer pressure in the army he like never cared to do to be a drunkard which is why when he finally made rank and kind of got out of the you know new soldier uh barracks and mentality he stopped dr- drinking it was a rare rare thing even so so he's not into mind altering substances but he loves these movies he loves things like v- 
Van Wilder and you're, you know, these stupid teenage, mm-hmm. he grew up in the days of National Lampoon, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, with that, let's take a quick uh, look over from our sponsors at Grow Generation where you guys might be able to uh, get some nice equipment and help you, uh, uh, you know, enjoy some of these movies we've been talking about. Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. Grow Generation offers the best deals and discounts on the best grow products on the market. Grow Generation serves customers across the nation and carries a wide inventory of renowned cultivation brands. Go to www.growgeneration.com where the pros go to grow. And thank you guys very much over there at Grow Generation for sponsoring the episode. I'm sure you guys are pretty excited about about today's episode. So, <laughs> Manny, uh, let's let's do this. Let's talk about our favorite we 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 related stoner for 420 movie. The movie we are definitely watching t- today. What what are you watching? So okay, so we're just doing three then, because um, in honorable mentions I have to put in uh, Friday. See, uh, I knew that. I thought that would potentially be your number one, but no, it's it was not. on the list. It's okay, on the so list. It's wrong. just honorable mention. <laughs> I love it. Um, Grandma's Boy is just that much better. Yeah. Um, just it sparked two sequels, and I, I think Ice Cube did a phenomenal job, and they, they for a long time, a lot of memorable lines. Uh, another honorable mention for me, it might be your favorite. Uh, and it's not my favorite, not because of quality, just because it doesn't have that... Uh, personal touch to it mm-hmm. I, I just uh the other one i resonate a little bit more with just because i, I watched it so much grow, um growing up uh fear and loathing in las vegas is one of the most insane first time experiences i ever had watching it because i did watch it while um under the influence i had no idea what the hell was going on and i didn't even know if toby Maguire was actually in the movie um, yes, he was. <laughs> it was it was just just amazing work by Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro. Yes. Um, and it actually I think that's the movie where I gained so much more respect for Benicio del Toro because of he does not look like what he looks like. He, you know, just completely yes. transformed. Um, but you know, in my um in my um professional opinion, as he would say. It's it's one of those must movies you need to experience regardless because even if you're not under the influence, the way it's the way it's presented and the length of it is like a trip. It is it is crazy, and uh, uh, it is it's it's um, one of my favorite Johnny Depp movies. But the one movie <clears throat> I have to say it's my favorite stoner movie, and it's funny because I watched it before I even knew what weed was. I, well, I knew what it was, but before I knew the effects of it or anything mm. or got the jokes, it has to be how high. Method Man and Red Man. Uh, and it's because <clears throat> it's, uh, it's one of the first movies uh, we ever got uh, for our DVD player when we got one. Yeah, true. And it's an early one. Right. 98, uh, the, 99. Nine, so, no, so the no, first DVD we ever got was actually Fast and the Furious. Uh, but the second one, I I think I remember is how high, and I think we got it. Yep. It was a uh, um, a copy from Blockbuster that they were selling. Nice. And Method Man, Red Red Man, just killed it. Just I I've not seen a movie with a just such a fun storyline and and just clever and and it's and the pacing is good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you can't can't really take these films necessarily for quote unquote critical success because if you look at any of these films that we've talked about besides maybe fear and loathing in las vegas uh if you look at like a site like rotten tomatoes they're all quote unquote rotten yeah right and it's and it's it it talk it speaks a lot about <clears throat> what critics are looking at foreign films from what audiences look for in films especially in specific genres uh, like in this case, it's a stoner comedy. Uh, and I don't think that critics should be looking at stoner films uh, that seriously because you missed the, I think you missed the point. Uh, how high it, I, I just think the chemistry between Method Man and Red Man was really, really good. Uh, it, uh, just 
such a freaking good time, man. Uh, and I watched it a billion times. I know most of the, I can I can almost recite that movie nice. as far as memorable lines. My brother and I still quote it to this day. Um, and and uh, it, it's I mean what what uh, uh what better premise than your homie gets hit by a bus, set on fire, <laughs> and uh, and to honor him you uh you you take his ashes and and you spread it and you make weed plants and then he helps he comes back from the dead when you smoke him. In the ghost form and helps you pass your test to go to Harvard. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Yeah, just One, wonderful. <laughs> and you take the two dudes from the hood and you put them in Harvard. So it just, <sighs> just uh, <laughs> such, such a funny movie, man. And then they tried to remake it, I think, two or three years ago. It just didn't. No, man, you can't remake that. It just doesn't it, work. How high? <clears throat> two. 2019 tv movie yeah it's like an mtv movie yeah it looks like there's a way in in it it was dumb man no good maybe i can't tell no yeah it's it's crazy um yeah how how high was a a hilarious hilarious movie that's one of those high, high school movies for me uh um it's always on everyone's list and like you said um quotables and and most of the movies we've we've mentioned we've we've had you you know one-liners that we can just spout off about and that goes again back to fast times at ridgemont high Uh you hear that it's my my skull i'm so wasted you you know funny quotable timelessness right that's that's something so unique to to the human condition this this desire to every now and then step out of this in into something for lack of a better phrase otherworldly to change to alter your mind right right it mm-hmm. is so natural for humans to to want to do that that uh the the term adrenaline junkie be, became a, a real thing. Adrenaline get, gets you high, and p- people seek it out. It's ad- addictive, and uh, it's universal. And its combination with comedy f- for the stoner films was just like I said, my d- dad a complete square. And yet he and I can sit down and watch some of these movies and just laugh out loud at at the same j- jokes. <clears throat> And and it's it's great. So um, my my number one uh, is a horror stoner film, and uh, I love it. It's it's always in my my favorite Halloween movies, favorite horror comedy, favorite stoner films, and that is Idle Hands. You ever oh, seen it? No, I have not. Oh my goodness. This. You are in for a treat. I think it's on Tubi or uh, Pluto for free right right now. Now I'll verify and and put that out. Idle Hands has a Devin Sawa is the lead character An- Anton. Uh, it's got Vivica A. Fox in it. She plays a uh, evil demon hunter, and uh, it's got Seth Green and the guy that plays foggy and daredevil um something ethan or ethan's something uh he was also mighty ducks you know what i'm talking about right yeah fulton reed and mighty ducks and uh it's got all all of them in it and what it is is there's this de- demon that possesses the laziest fucks that it can find and then causes m- murder and may- mayhem before moving on right and it possesses the hand Idle hands are the devil's playground is the saying that they are playing off of. And um, it's it's legitimately uh, uh, cannabis is is the second star. Uh, The the whole movie revolves around it. It, It's affects what it does to to Pete. Like I said, it's this demon seeking out laziness. You know, what is what do people you know, couch lock and th- things like that are t- terms in 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 uh the marijuana community and stuff, and it's just such a great 
horror movie with with all the classic tropes you got uh 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 um rock m- music you've got z- zombies you've got nu- nudity and and teenage sex which means they must die he and it's great because they they do um the uh, the band the offspring is in it oh yeah uh, yeah, they 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 play at at the the high school. That's how old fashioned that this movie is. And um, I got to see it in theaters back in the day when uh your your parents uh well at least, at least where I was living at at the time could just buy the ticket for a rated R film and then you could go go in. And this yeah, this came so, out yeah. yeah this came out in 99 as a middle school. I remember seeing this with several of my middle school friends in theaters. Loved it. It's hilarious. I can't recommend it enough. So I'm surprised you haven't seen it. You you did say horror is a bit of a new, newer thing for you. So yeah, man, uh, idle hands. It's phenomenal. And Jessica Alba, I forgot. How can I forget Jessica Alba in this? this movie um definitely uh uh a great movie for a for 14 year old kid <laughs> <laughs> a great movie for a 14 year old uh uh middle middle schooler going going in into who i high school cause it came out in a- april um yeah man that's that's it uh it's funny you mentioned fear and loathing in in las vegas because Another thing about about stoner films is there's a a whole other genre, the the bigger genre that that falls under, and that's just drug films in in general. Um, and I love those. And just out of curiosity, I was wondering, what is your favorite drug movie? Just overall drama, comedy, horror doesn't matter. Do you, do you have a like that drug movie that is your go to? Uh, shoot. I think I have one. Uh, I'm going to be hella basic. <laughs> uh, though, some of the ones that come to mind are Blow. It's good. Um, Spun, Scarface. Spotting, Scarface, Requiem. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, there's just so many. And so, but yeah, those are the two I think that come to mind. <clears throat> Probably, it might be Blow. Might be. Um, but also back to just to because you you added like a horror film, it it sparked oh, sure, mind. just a quick <clears throat> just a quick shout out to um, scary movie man. <clears throat> um, just I don't know the whole thing. The whole thing you talking about uh, <laughs> a horror horror <laughs> film reminded me of Shorty. Yeah, was he when he he's getting he's getting rolled up by the weed plant. <laughs> And then he's not even at, at one point. He's not even scared anymore. He's just like, take it to the head, take it to the head. <clears throat> and in order to save him, they're like, we got Funyuns and Cheetos. And he, <laughs> oh <Drops man>. <laughs> yeah, I like it when he gets sh- shot. <laughs> he's leaking. yeah, he's trying. Yeah, this is so good. Funny. You want to hit? <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I, I just, I had to bring it up. There's no way I couldn't. It was just such a good time. <laughs> it is. No, that's the thing. We could spend, you know, all all day long talking about this. That's why it's so cool. There's a great drug movie. You may not have seen it because it's a little bit more obscure, even though it's got some big names in it. Go. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't seen Go. Okay, Go, Go also, 90, 99. You guys... For for some of you younger millennials and and Gen, Gen Zers, uh, might not realize that like what would you say from about ninety six to oh three was like the golden era of like modern stoner films, American Pie, How High, like all that. Yeah, I, I would say like ni- ninety six to to oh three ish, my middle and oh, high school years. Also, shout out to Pineapple Express, bro. There you go. Oh, That's um, K. Katie Holmes, uh, was in this Timothy Oliphant was in this. Uh, William Fickner is in the, this. Um, uh, 
There was a cu couple others, um, but g go. Uh, David Boreanaz is in it, uh, I believe. And anyways, go. It's um, mostly ecstasy, and uh, it's actually like three different stories spread over three different gr groups, but all in the same time. And it's just a, a balls to the wall, pedal to the metal, full speed ahead, awesome thing. In which case, one person ODs on a, a substance so bad that the the name game that they were playing earlier, where you try to name somebody famous with the letter of the alpha alphabet, and he was stuck on X and couldn't think of anyone famous, and a cat tells him, uh, 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 a ch Chinese philosopher whose name starts with X, and... He's literally having the, this conversation with the cat in sub subtitles. That's how high he is. And the movie shows it, it from that per perspective. And uh, it just it blends in enough of the, the action that you get from, from something like a Scarface with some of the drama from like a Requiem and uh, comedy from like a, a Half-Baked How High type, type deal. Really good, intense Fun, fun ride. Do, uh, Doug uh, Lyman uh, was the director and written by, by John August. So, yeah. Highly suggest uh, that people check that that out. Um, anything else, man, on, on stoner films? On on that? On this, this 420 culture day thing that we got going on? <laughs> You're muted, by the way, man, Manny. <laughs> Uh, I think the main point I wanted to make, I made it a little bit earlier about the way that the films are treated by the film industry as, as you know, garbage, mm -hmm. but yet they're so beloved by people. And isn't that really what matters? Yeah. <laughs> I I find that, <clears throat> I find that really interesting. <clears throat> Just as I was like looking through the stoner films last night on list and stuff and saw what there were ratings and things were of that nature by, by critics. And I just like, was like cussing them out the entire time. Like, like, do you not enjoy things? <laughs> you know, like, the, what what does it take in order for you know? Can you just not be serious for a minute and just and just take a step back and, and enjoy it for what it is? Um, and so I I found that I found that really interesting. But uh, you know, it's it's funny because we're we're now in a time and a day where marijuana is pretty much legal everywhere, not federally, of course, but um. It's, I'm surprised it has. It's still taking this long to get it, uh, to still going through it, uh, but it's it uh, it's generally more accepted. So it, it it's just interesting how how every I mean you know it's the the films were almost ahead of their time as yeah. as, <clears throat> as far as um, what 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 weed is to to everyone, and it's such a normal thing now. Um, I know I don't I don't partake as much as I used to. I, I know it's it's almost like every few months I I have a couple of pens that I keep with me just in case, and and you know sometimes with my brother uh, or you know some friends and but I I always um it's it's almost rare but it's a, it's a good time when you do. Yeah, <clears throat> I could say say the this and it might it might be a little bit more on on the seri serious side, which is the cool thing about. Uh, LR mornings, uh, soon soon to be your your day daily cup of genre. Uh, um, uh, me medically, uh, I I used to have a, a giant medicine ca cabinet. You know, people people can hear my my stutter and stuff. I've got the uh, uh, a head in, head in injury, uh, but I I have a lot of other health issues and and. A uh, lot that that were related to pain and stuff, and um, uh, it's been very, very li liberating and giving me not all of my my life back, but a chunk of it that I never th thought I would g get back. I I can't sit in this chair as long as I I can now, and I still can't sit, you know, for for eight eight hours like like back in the day, but. It it used to kill me to be in in the chair for for an hour. Now I can make make it through. So it's you know read up people and of course f 
follow all your local laws and and stuff like that be safe you know there's plenty of research on you know like teenagers and b brain development they shouldn't necessarily be using it but but once you're grown and your your response look i ca come from the the military where uh, alcohol is almost water you know it's it's a way of life it's glorified we have we have drinking cadences while we're running drinking cadences his while we're marching we have these these dr drinking uh uh ceremonies and almost uh uh um cult like uh uh Yes, yeah, ceremonies at, at military balls where a grog is made and all this alcohol is poured in together. And every I, I can't tell you how many soldiers careers I've either watched go away because of an alcohol related incident or I've initiated the, the paperwork. I've been like, no, you're you're fucked. You're done. Get the fuck out of my ar army. I don't want you. You, you know. Uh, but I've, the only time anybody's ever gotten tr trouble for the green stuff is they popped hot for it. They never went out and got in a car wreck. They didn't hit their spouse. They didn't steal anything. They didn't, they got, they just ordered a pizza <laughs> <laughs> and now I got to punish the, them. And I, I hated it. I hated it. So, um, that, that's, that's, that's that things are ch changing. Mm -hmm. Go enjoy some movies. And and start there if you're one of those people that might have some reservations. Start with some of these movies that we we re recommended. Uh, gotta talk a little bit about some t tech news, Manny, because it is is Tuesday, and uh, there there's something I think a lot of people are semi aware of, but but may maybe not as much. I went to uh, the military exchange where where I live. We were looking at uh, um, a potential uh, refrigerator replacement. I don't know if you've noticed, but we're in a bit of a chip shortage in the world. Um, processors for for GPUs, for CPUs, uh, silicon is is hard to, to come by. The fridges are all smart devices now. Everything's connected. Everything's got microchips in it. You can't buy refrigerators right now, Manny. They literally had signs not of it. The only model at this exchange was like the basic non-smart opens and closes keeps shit cold, which I like. You, you know, that's what what I need. need. But um, the reason why you guys are ha having your issues with, with getting uh, uh, the... GPUs for your your gaming rigs, or if you want to get into crypto mining, the reason you guys guys are having so many issues with uh, getting uh, PlayStation Fives, Xboxes. Uh, everyone wants to look at just the scalpers, which they are j jackasses. But um, it's really this this chip shortage going on because of lack of fabrication places. Um, everyone knows about the the big one in in Taiwan. They're they're usually you know booked by in, Intel, Nvidia, Sony. Make this chip, make that that chip. But um, re recently we've we've had some some investors and some other tech companies, including Intel, who've had their own fabrications, but stating that they're going to spin it up, start opening up uh, fabrication for other other people. Whole the thing is, all all of this all of this gets gets down to to um one one thing what brought this on everyone upgrading devices for for the the pandemic you needed zoom you needed uh a new laptop you needed a new camera a new phone whatever gaming systems all of that that leads to it and so so how how do we how do we solve this 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 problem well one Product life cycles, Manny. How often do do you, if you could optimally upgrade your phone the way you wanted to, how often do you think you would upgrade your your phone? Um, that I really need it. 
Or just want it. Which are the two are we you, talking about? You want wanting it. If you had your optimum money flow and you're like, yeah, I want a new phone every – like I'm an every other model guy because for that, some I reason – that, I think that's where I'm at too. Yeah. I, and you know, the funny thing, especially with iPhones, is it seems like it's every other model that's worth getting anyway. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> you have to understand I come from an iPhone 6 and I didn't get one till an iPhone 10. Wow. But because of the fact that I was comfortable with it, it did what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I don't I don't need to have the latest and greatest. If I have it, it's for a purpose. Like I upgraded my laptop for things like this because uh, I do Zoom calls all the time. I upgraded my mic because of well things like this. But as far <laughs> as my phone, I text. I was able to uh, check my emails. I'm old school, man. Yeah. I had a Motorola flip phone. That was my first phone. Samsung it had just phone. digits yep. on the screen. <clears throat> so I, I didn't need to for, to be like the latest and greatest. Uh, but the other one broke, so I did have to get a 10. And this one is on its last uh, life right now, so I'm probably going to have to upgrade again. But that's going to be two years already since I've had it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, ultimately, I think it'd be every two, two, three years, maybe two. But yeah, like every not so not the next one, but the, the model after that. Yeah, I, I'm the same way also about consoles. I'm not going to get it when it launches. I'm going to probably yeah. get it a year, year and a half after it launches. Um, Make sure they work out bugs. and It doesn't bother me. You know, stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. some people, it, for some people, it almost seems like it's an itch. It's a, an anxiety that you have to have the latest and greatest. Um, and I don't, I just don't get it. I don't need it. And it doesn't enhance your life any better just because your, your yeah. camera is a little bit brighter. Uh, uh, granted, it's not the same for, you know, computers and things like that, because sometimes you need it for you mm -hmm. need optimal speeds and you need fans and you need certain things. If you have it for. For a purpose, then, yeah, but if you have it just because you're a dick and you want to have the 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 latest and greatest because it's part of your status and it makes you feel like you're keeping a up person, with the jo Joneses. Yeah, then then nah, whatever. Man. Yeah. The reason I bring that up in product cycles is once the once the chip is made, especially when you're talking processors, there, there's not much you can do with it a afterwards. You either use it as as a as a you know comp component, and it's older and and slower, uh, or you send it to the the trash bin, hopefully to a, a proper e waste recycler, which is still very very difficult releases yeah. a lot of to toxic fumes and this is this is part of what I, what I want to get at we're we're dealing with this chip shortage because of this increase in in buying some of it necessary to work work from home some yeah. of it not as necessary and then yes the scalpers are are an issue but what I want to propose to pe people and like I said the other day hardware I got I'm good on our hard hardware. I I will talk to you guys about TVs, screens, systems, speeds, uh, uh, all that stuff all day long. Software, I gotta get back into it. It's been a while. Um, but but what I want to pr propose to you guys in the audience is think about your your actual needs and what what it is that you're doing with, with your your electronics, with your technology, because. Uh, I'm not the world's greenest person. Like I'm not a a, a a big Earth Day guy, but um, I don't believe in hurting the planet. And, you know, don't do things that we don't ha have to. Look at what you you need. Do you really need a a 4K OLED t TV? What do you watch? Y you probably don't. More more than likely, a a solid 1080p that can actually hit 60 hertz. Uh, for real, not artificially, is going to be good for like ninety percent of the people out there. Save you on money, save you on 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 uh space, and save silicon for those that need workstations. They need a higher processor for uh their their workstation, or they need a high end graphics card because they do a lot of uh. Uh, after effects and and video effects for production and things like that. Re research. Reach out to 
all of the wonderful tech people on on YouTube reach out to us uh, as you know as as this segment grows and things like that research and make sure that the product you buy does what you need it to do and use it as long as you possibly can until it's until not until it's obsolete until it's no longer usable for for you what do you think man manny is that fair uh i mean yeah but i i think that sometimes manufacturers are are ahead of it so that they may oh planned obsolescence yes yeah absolutely and may not even be 100 percent on the consumer but yeah i I feel that and i think we've talked about this um when talking about certain specs where I i think we're talking about monitors uh, some people don't know what they need or want, mm-hmm. and then they buy things and they don't know what they bought. Yeah, they, they they heard the Best Buy guy say a whole lot of fancy things and it sounded good, but you don't know exactly what any of those things do. <clears throat> and I I think I think one of the times we talked about it because um, we're talking about uh, gaming and how there's you know I think it's like twenty eight or thirty two inch, which is the optimal size. And anything bigger than that is your brain can't process it anyway, and um, and it and it just makes it harder for you to to actually uh, be successful, especially in a game like Call of Duty and things like that. Um, so, yeah, things like field field of view and right. and screen distortion and uh, your draw distance, all that. Like you mentioned, like Call of Duty esports. Yeah, yeah. Mo- monitor setups super important. Yeah, so it so it. Uh, but your but your average consumer probably thinks a bigger screen, a better gameplay experience. When in fact, <clears throat> you look at esports. The only reason they have giant screens, the audience, the audience to watch, watching. yep, the everyone's on like a twenty-seven playing, inch TV yeah. uh, mon- <laughs> monitor. Yep, yeah, you never you never see like a final match of two people playing on giant screens. <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't work. You, you, it you, happened in the Wizard. No. That that was a good mo- movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, so, and then same thing with the smart fridge. Like, do you really need like my my fridge opens and closes and it keeps things cold? I think that's what it's supposed to do. Unless yeah. you have one, <clears throat> unless you have one like Harrison Ford, you can get into and survive a nuclear blast. <laughs> The the only semi smart feature that I am remotely okay with is the inside camera on a fridge. The idea of crap, I forgot my list. Let me look in the fridge real quick while I'm at the store. That's okay. But like the the see through screens, the one with like the the mini fridge opening fr- front door, and then you open up the big door to get to the rest of the stuff and how that will save you energy. Like, why no. do you need to check your Facebook on your, on your, yeah. You know, like I just, so that's just dumb. Oh, and la- last, last, last thing. Cause I know Manny's g- got to get going to work and I got to get this edited up for you guys. Last bit of tech tech thing. I want to say to you guys, because this virus is out out there. I wanted to say this la- last week, air purifiers for your, for your home, infrared air purifiers. Don't take it just for, from me. Do the re- research on your own. Physics, guys, are, are key to this. Don't waste y- your money, okay? Uh, high-end clean rooms use more than just an infrared filter. They use some incredibly high, powerful fans, suction, and filters that are like feet long to, to, to clean ger- germs and stuff like that. This little infrared light that you're going to put in your HVAC for $500. Don't take my word alone, but it's not. Air moves too too fast past that light, and you don't have the, the proper filters to s- slow it down for the lights to do anything. Do your research on your own, but I'm, I'm putting that out there. Those UV air scrubbers are not all there cracked up to be. Please... Please, please, before you spend money out of fear, do do research. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, guys, check out the website lrmonline.com every day for all of your entertainment news, needs, and, uh, and opinions. Uh, just be sure to subscribe to the U- YouTube channel. 
lots of great content. Manny, uh, Nancy Gig doing celebrity interviews, all of our wonderful podcasts, which are also available on the LRM Podcast Network, wherever you get podcasts from. Marvel Multiverse Mondays, LR Mornings, Breaking Geek. They're doing a, a dungeon with a uh, dun Dungeon and Dragons uh, quest on Breaking Geek Radio uh, last week and th this week, I believe. And uh, Anime Versal, all, all sorts of really, really cool stuff. Uh, Manny, what do you got going on on the internet? So so today in honor of 420, I have, I'm have i featuring a film that's re being released today called The Marijuana Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Doreen Brown, who is a uh, one of one of the people, <clears throat> one of the women who took place in a experiment in the 70s where uh, she and uh, 19 other women were tested on for 98 days on the effect of marijuana on the female body in order for uh, the government to try and dissuade uh, legalization. Unfortunately, the the results were not what they wanted. Uh, they found out that uh, one of the things that they were finding out was that uh, people who were in the control group were actually doing worse than people mm -hmm. who were actually taking marijuana. So they buried the whole thing. Yeah. And after the women, after the women got out, they left them. They never contacted them again. No, no after effects. And this is after being locked down for 98 days with the same group of people. No going outside. No nothing. Wow. Smoking weed every day. So I have one of the people who actually went through that, as well as one of the actresses who plays one of the women. Uh, two of them actually and uh, that will be out throughout the day today outstanding um, great and then uh, you guys be sure to check us out on our social medias at uh, LRM exclusive for the site at LRM Emmanuel or LRM underscore Emmanuel for Man Manny and at that Kyle Malone uh, all on Twitter for myself thank you guys so much for listening and uh, enjoy yourselves safely responsibly and we'll talk to you tomorrow Bye.